All right, so today we have to talk about the FOMC minutes. Okay, so for people who do not know how the FOMC minutes usually go, this minutes actually come out about three weeks after the FOMC meeting. Okay, and this is where we actually get all the nitty gritty details of the actual um, meeting itself. So during the FOMC itself, what's going to happen is Jerome Powell is going to come out. He's going to summarize the whole entire meeting himself. And then he's going to talk about it for like five, ten minutes. And then afterwards, he's going to take Q&A. Okay, so usually during this whole Q&A process, this is where the market really moves. But three weeks later, we actually see what was actually properly discussed during the whole entire uh, meeting itself. So today, the minutes is actually out and I'm going to be going through some of the important factors that I actually uh, take a look at, look CF. Okay, so uh, first up, uh, let's just zoom in a little bit on this. Okay, the private sector job opening rate as measured by the job openings label turnover survey moved up in October but remained high. Okay, so this is the jobs report. The jobs report also came out yesterday. Okay, and apparently the jobs, jobs report did not really do as well. Okay, sadly it did not do as well, but uh, I, I mean it's kind of expected to a certain extent. So I'm not really that uh, that concerned about it. Okay, now let's look at it. Uh, over here you can see, uh, okay, default rates on corporate bonds and leverage loans remain at a very, very low level. Okay, so this is kind of good. Uh, it kind of just, uh, okay, it kinda, it's kind of good at, bad at the moment, okay, right now, because we're currently at such a high, um, like inflation is so high at the point right now where uh, it becomes where good news become bad news, bad news become bad news, sort of thing, okay? Uh, the default rate, we kind of want default rate to uh, be high because if default rates are higher, it means that people are not going to spend um, money as much and that means you're kind of in a mild recession and that's how you actually get inflation downwards. If default rate is still at a very, very low level, it means that there's still a lot more pain for us to actually uh, get to before we can see default rates actually go up. Okay, over here you can see job matching efficiency was not improving as fast as uh, previously anticipated. Okay, so over here you can see, okay, moreover, the staff assumed a slower pace of decline in the natural rate of unemployment over the near term in response to recent estimates suggesting that job matching efficiency was not improving as fast uh, as previously anticipated. I think this is relatively all right. We kind of do want to see uh, job matching efficiency kind of go down, if anything. Um, the Feds kind of do not want to see uh, job rates go up as fast. It's kind of a good thing. Kind of, kind of screwed up, but it is kind of a good thing. Okay, over here you see uh, the sluggish growth in the real private and domestic spending expected over the next year. A subdued global economic outlook and persistently tight financial conditions were seen as tilting the risk to the downside around the baseline projection for real economic activity. And the staff still viewed the possibility of a recession sometime over the next year as a plausible alternative to the baseline. Okay, I think this is going to be a slightly um, worrying of some sort. Okay, so what they're actually saying here is that recession is finally a possibility to them. Okay, because previously, um, according to Jerome Powell and Joe Biden and a lot of all those um, senators themselves, they did think that recession is most likely not going to be happening, especially for Jay Powell. He did, he was aiming for a softish lending. I think he is still aiming for a softish lending. But with this kind of words out here saying that, you know, a possibility of a recession sometime over the next year as a plausible uh, alternative to the baseline is starting to see... Yeah, maybe we are probably going to see a recession, okay, which is why I think people who probably read this are going to be a little bit more uh, concerned. Uh, after reading this, I basically immediately went to hedge uh, half of my portfolio. I, I thought that, you know, uh, of course, by hedging, I, I do mean, like, you know, I'm going to be selling covered calls. I'm going to be buying puts, that sort of thing uh, with um, stocks that I actually do have, okay. That's kind of what I did uh, in order for me to actually uh, bring down uh, my downside here, uh, if that makes sense. Okay, over here you can see uh, uh, economic uh, activity appeared likely to expand in 2023 at a pace well below its trend growth rate. Okay, so uh, this is just basically talking about the GDP, which is why in the previous SCP that we actually saw, we saw that, uh, you know, the pace for uh, the SCP for GDP actually went down. Okay, kind of, we already expected that. Okay, several participants remarked that budgets were stretched for low to moderate income household, uh, that many consumers were shifting their spending to less expensive alternatives. I think this is uh, normal. It just basically means that the lower income families are starting to uh, really feel the heat for inflation. Uh, I think this has already been happening for more than just uh, more than a better half of the, uh, a better half of the year uh, from last year. So. 
uh, nothing that we uh, we weren't exactly expecting. Okay, labor demand had remained strong to date despite the slowdown in economic growth. With a few remarking that uh, some business contracts reported that they would be keen to re retain workers even in the face of slowing demand for output because uh, of their recent experiences of labor shortages and hiring challenges. Okay, I think uh, I do want to touch upon this um, a little bit more. Okay, so in our current uh, so-called label cycle uh, if you may uh, we had the whole great resignation where everyone basically was like saying oh you know what i'm gonna be quitting my job uh, for various reasons there's gonna be the whole pandemic burnout and at the same time people have a lot of money and also at the same time people are trying to jump to a new job because that's how they are basically going to be getting paid higher Okay, if you're staying at your same old job, asking for a $2,000 raise is not going to be happening. But if you jump to a new job, getting a $3,000 raise is actually surprisingly easy. That sort of thing uh, usually happens. Uh, so right now they're saying that, you know, labor demand in general is going to be strong. And for some of the businesses who already have pretty good workers, they are going to give them better benefits. They're going to give them a raise. They're going to give them uh, various other incentive for them to actually stay put in the company itself. Uh, this way they, you know, it's easier for them to then just rather that for, for them to get to a rival company, uh, better for them to, you know, get into uh, getting somewhere else. And then afterwards, uh, experiencing your uh, labor shortages and hiring challenges, then you're going to have to go through the whole entire cycle again. So what's happening is that businesses are just going to take the stab, get it over and done with, let them stop the cycle themselves. Okay, pretty good. Okay, I, I think that, that that's a pretty good a good thing that's happening. Okay, um, over here, inflation data received for October and November uh, showed welcome uh, showed welcome reduction in the monthly pace of price increases as they stressed that it would take substantially more evidence of progress uh, to be confident that inflation was on a sustained downward path. I think this actually uh, makes sense. Okay, sadly the, to be the case because when October report actually came out. Jerome Powell was saying, eh, you know, one report is not enough. When November CPI came out, which is also pretty good, of course, they're saying that it's still not enough. Eventually, we kind of need to see four or five reports before we actually see, oh, okay, inflation is actually on a downward path, a downward trend. And then only then, then you start to see people say, oh, okay, you know what, maybe we can actually change uh, how we actually go around doing it. I'm, I'm guessing we are most likely going to be seeing five different um, reports before uh, the Federal Reserve starts to actually um, plot down the possible uh, rate cuts. So hey, you never know, you never know, okay? But later on, there's going to be one very, very important news, um, one very, very important line that I do want to uh, point out, which is one of the reasons why the market kind of like faltered a little bit, okay? So uh, moving downwards, okay, uh, longer inflation remained well above 2% goal, the greater risk the greater the risk uh, uh, that longer term inflation expectation could become unanchored, okay, this is very important, okay, such as uh, development, if it materialized, it would make it much more costly to bring inflation down to achieve uh, the committee's statutory, statutory uh, objectives of a maximum employment and price stability, okay. I think it's kind of just uh, basically saying that, you know, it's um, right now the whole entire in inflation is kind of um, starting to become unanchored, uh, which is kind of dangerous because that means we're going back to the 1970s hyperinflation era where uh, inflation was unanchored. But right now, I think it, uh, inflation is relatively anchored. So uh, the risk for inflation to get unanchored is going to be quite high if we continue having this uh, sort of level of inflation for a very, very long time. Hence why they went for a 50 basis point hike instead of a 25, okay? Okay, let's look at the orange one first. Uh, inflation outlook remained tilted to the upside, sadly to be the case. Uh, participant cited the possibility that price uh, pressure could prove to be more persistent than anticipated. Persistence in general in this uh, report is just very, very bad, okay? Uh, the labor market staying tight for longer than as anticipated. Uh, that's kind of what um, Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve don't want to hear. Uh, they do want to see labor market kind of um, loosen up a little bit, get colder instead of getting hotter. That's how they can actually see uh, which price spiral possibility getting out of hand. Okay, they want to just completely see uh, which price spiral just not be a possibility at all. Okay. And with how the labor market is still staying tight, it's not going to be a very, very good look. 
And now for, for the last one, uh, over here, this one line, this one line is enough, okay? No participants anticipated that it would be appropriate to begin reducing the federal funds rate target in 2023. Okay, so what does this actually mean? Okay, so what does this actually mean? It means that in 2023, we are probably not going to get any more cuts, okay? Not getting any more cuts is going to be uh, concerning, okay? Because a lot of people are actually expecting uh, some rate cuts to be happening in 2023, hopefully in the second half of the year okay so of course i'm just saying it right now scp usually comes out every quarterly okay hopefully by the second scp which is the first the, the final first half of the year we are probably going to see the last uh, the last scp of that half of the year we hope to see federal funds rate actually go down if the federal funds rate go down i can assure you the market is gonna go up Okay, because when federal funds rate go down, it simply means that a rate hike is most a rate cut is most likely going to be happening, and that's going to be huge for the market. Okay, we do need rate cuts to happen uh, in twenty twenty three. Hopefully, of course, but, but you know, if you're talking about a recession actually hitting, then uh, no point even talking about a rate cut or rate hike or whatever it is. We're most likely going to see the market just get destroyed, and then all the rates are going to get cut out completely because they need to help to uh, build up the market all over again in 2023 if that happens okay so uh, i do think that you know there is a possibility that you know um we might see a rates cut i'm hoping we are going to see a rates cut in the second half of 2023 of course the scp uh for right now the scp kind of shows that there's no rates cuts the minutes kind of show that there's no rate, rate cut uh but how the Federal Reserve has been, every single SCP for the whole of 2022 has been revised upwards. I don't see why for the whole of 2023, they cannot revise it downwards. So yeah, hopefully that, that will be the case. That's just me being bullish. I'm not sure if that's just my copium being at its maximum. But yeah, uh, that, that's all for the FOMC minutes. Uh, I just kind of want to like, kind of sum it up for you guys so that you guys can uh, understand this whole entire report uh, a little bit better. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one and also please subscribe down below. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll see you guys.